put animate on. Excellent. Actually, I want to bring the hoop on before that. So I'm going to go to hoop, select hoop down here, the here on the timeline. I want this to animate on a whole lot faster. I want the hoop to be completed very early. Even earlier than that. I want it completed real quick. Perfect. All right, take our position and we're going to animate our position starting at 20 all the way to 40. And let's move it forward. And we want to go completely past the camera. So now what we have is we have this hoop that's going to fly on, animate on, cross in front of the text, and go right across. It clips the text a bit, which is fine. It, it doesn't matter. Uh, it doesn't matter if it clips the text at all because we're going to layer this on top as, as an element. So it, even though it's in the scene, we're just using the same camera. Uh, it's The hoop is going to sit in the After Effects project on top of the CG toots. So even though, yeah, it crosses through, it's just going to sit on top. So in the final look, it's not even going to look like it's clipping right through. But that's it. We have our hoop flying on and then swinging by in front of the camera. So now we're going to close this down. Oh, sorry, we're going to bring this back off. All right, so let's say I want to animate this out. I want to render these two pieces. I want to render the logo with the background and then I want to render the hoop, but I want to render the hoop separately because I want to put this on top of everything. What I need to do is I need to make another compositing tag. So I go to Cinema 4D Tags, Compositing, and then I'm going to turn it towards not seen by the camera. But it's still seen by the CG Toots Plus logo, which means that as the hoop passes in front, it's going to reflect on it. In fact, you can even see it. See? You can see the reflection right there. As the hoop passes in front of the CG Toots Plus logo, you can see the reflection is playing across it, which is what I want. I want to be able to see that. So you can see it right there. Those little dark slashes right there. That's what I want. So we're going to render 60 frames. So let's go to render, render settings, uh, output 0 to 60. And we're just going to render right on top of our file. Oh, you know what? I want to show you another trick. Uh, let's see if it's someplace else. I know this sounds weird. We can render right on top, but we're not going to. We're going to call this multi-pass animation. Animated. Same logo, same name, same everything. Now we're going to hit render. Rendered picture viewer. And I'll be right back when this is done. All right. So our render, our animated render is finished. We're going to go over here. And we're going to make a new folder in After Effects called 3D. And then in there, we're going to import our animated multipass render. First, we need to import our depth. And then we're going to import Command I. We're going to import our RGBA. It doesn't matter where you click it, just as long as you have target sequence. It'll go through and it'll grab everything. There we go. Now, I want to replace these things in here. I want to replace the depth and the targa, these still images, with my animated uh, renders. But I got things referencing things. I got, like, let's say this is more complicated. Let's say I had effects and all kinds of stuff on it. Let's say I put, um, for some reason, I put a, a distort on here. And then, uh, what else? Uh, uh, let's say I put, like, dust and scratches on here to take away. And I have a little bulge in there for some reason. I want these to still be on there, but I don't want to copy and paste them over because I'll take forever. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have this selected up here. My CG Toots Plus logo RGBA, that's the, the target image. Then down here, I'm going to have it selected, RGBA image. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold down Alt on a Mac or Option on a Mac. It might be Alt on a PC, I'm not quite sure. But you hold down Option on a Mac, then you click and you drag. And what you're doing is you're going to replace this still with the uh, animation. And you can see all the effects translate. So I'm going to actually delete these because awful idea. Uh, but if you look, you can see our depth map is all screwed up because it's still a still image. It's not a, it's not a render anymore. Or it's, not, it's not fitting with the animation anymore. So we'll hold down our depth. We'll grab it, and then we'll bring it down here, and we'll replace that too. And that fixes too because we replaced it in the layer. If you go down here to our below our adjustment layer, there's our depth render. There's our animated depth 
render that we replaced. So After Effects automatically updates everything else in here to make sure that it all meshes real nice. So actually, let's rename this Depth of Field. So now, as you can see, as we animate out through the animation, as we go through the animation, you can see we have a depth of field in the background that's animating perfectly. In fact, let's clip this to two. That's animating perfectly with our render. Let's turn this down to half, just for speed. You can see all the reflections playing across from our sky texture, and there goes our ring flying right by. And you can see the blur in the background. I mean, this is really kind of coming together, you know? And it's all being composited together in After Effects. So next, we need our ring. What we need is our ring, and we need a mat in order to animate this out. So we're going to turn off our multipass because we don't need that anymore. We have our depth map, and we have our RGBA image. We need just a regular... Uh, we just need a regular Targa with an alpha channel for our ring. So we're going to go down here to our hoop position and we're going to turn this on. Scene by camera. Then we're going to go down here to our text, add another compositing tag, scene by, turn off the scene by camera, and do that again for the background. So now the ring is going to be by itself. Now we're going to go to render, render settings, and we're going to save it. 3D results. We're going to call this ring render. And we're going to say CG toots plus logo underscore ring. I like to keep my file names in the renders because if you end up going back here and I need to find out what file I use to make this render in After Effects, it helps to have the file name of the project or the 3D project that I used. Because sometimes I'll have God, like two dozen Cinema 4D projects for any given project. And then if I need to change something, it's easier to go back and find it. All right, so we're going to render this out. Do, 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 do. There's our ring flying by, spinning around, and going past the camera. Perfect. Finish all 60 frames. There we go. Now we're going to make a matte object. Right click on hoop, right click on mat. Go to Cinema 4D tags, compositing. Actually, I shouldn't have put that tag there. I should have put it on the hoop. But um, go to here, hoop, Cinema 4D tags, compositing, and we're gonna turn off scene by camera. We're gonna enable the mat object. Now what we need to do is we need to make this. I mean, this is an example of how to use a mat object. This isn't ideally what you would do, but this works. If you click on Cinema 4D, the clappy thing. You go down here to Matte Object, we're going to click on that, and we're going to change the color to white. And what this does is this basically makes an alpha channel inside our scene that we use that will be colored white. Uh, normally you would color it black, but uh, this basically makes an alpha channel that will show up in our scene colored white. So if we decided that we wanted, like here, we wanted a window in order to tuck footage inside, we could make this a matte object, and then it would show up as just a, a shape, an alpha, basically an alpha channel cutout in 3D space that then moves and animates along with the camera. But uh, what we're going to do is we're just going to use this to make a matte ring. Then we're going to go to render settings, down here to ring render, go to our results. And we're going to call this ring matte. And then after we fix the logo, we're going to title this matte. And then we're going to render it. And it's going to sit there, tilt, pivot, and then like a coin, flip right by the camera. Excuse me, finish out the 61 frames. And we're going to zip back over into After Effects. All right, now we're going to import our ring mat. Sure. And we're going to import our ring render. Excellent. All right, copy these into the 3D folder. And we're going to get rid of these two because we're not using them anymore. As you can see up here, in case uh, we want to see if these were being used, like you click down here. Oh, well, that's not being used yet. Uh, but our depth of field is being used one time, and we can see where it's being used. But down here, we can see it's not being used at all. So we can delete it. And then we're going to bring down our mat, tuck that on top. And we're going to bring down our ring. And now we're going to make a new composition. We're going to call this test render. And we're going to make sure it's... 10 seconds long. And it should be the same, yeah, and NTSC widescreen square pixel because that's 
the first comp that we made, that's what it is. So all subsequent comps, unless we change it, will be that same thing. So here's our test render. Now we're going to import footage. I'm going to call this footage. It's not really footage. It's a picture of my hometown right down the street. So uh, we're going to call this uh, DAE source downtown Cleveland. Yeah, sea town, baby. Just drag that in. You can use anything for this, but I'm just going to use this as an example. And then we're going to bring in our CG Tooth Plus logo. And we're going to rename that because it's a really clunky name. We're going to rename this CG Toots Bumper. All right. So the reason we do it this way is, uh, oh, we need to put a background in there. So let's put a black solid in the bottom of this. And we're going to apply an effect to that. We're going to apply, um, actually, you know what? We'll just leave that alone. Uh, so that's our black solid. If we wanted to change that and put an effect on it, like let's say we wanted to put, like, give it some, uh, I'm hesitant to use plugins like this that you guys don't have, but, you know, so we wanted to give it, you know, a sense of atmosphere, make it look like that there's something else going on besides just the render. Light blue, almost frosted, there, tuck that in the background. And now we have what looks like, like a light off in the distance. And, you know, it's got a little, little sense of scope there. But anyway, um, the reason we want to do it that way is because we want this completely opaque until we cut out to the footage. And the reason I do it this way is whenever I set these up for clients, I'll have uh, my render. This is going to be what I render and give the client. But the test is to make sure that everything animates out and mats out and everything. And this is what I render as a preview to show them, to show them this is how it's going to work. So we have our mat and we have our ring. Uh, let's go up here to our mat. Right click on it. We're going to turn off the alpha channel on it. No. And uh, let's go here. And what we need to do is we need to find the point when the ring crosses across itself. It's so basically right here. So we need to clip the mat to that frame. So the ring shows up and then there's the mat, which is what we want. So now we have it to where the ring animates on on top of the CG toots, uses the same camera move, crosses in front, and then mats out. And the white is what we want to make the alpha channel. So what we're going to do is we're going to go here to Logo Mat. We're going to click on Mode. And scroll down here to Silhouette Luma. And what that's going to do is that's going to make the white completely, so basically it's going to turn that white part into an alpha channel. And if we go into our test render, you can see there's the footage underneath it. So the logo animates on, the ring shows up, and then wipes out to the footage. So you can see just like that. Now what's great about this is this is a trick in After Effects. So anything that we put that we layer underneath this, like if we layer, let's say we just put a bunch of squares in here for no reason at all other than the fact that we want to be cheeky. Anything we put underneath, let's make that a whole lot smaller, this uh, matte object right here is going to animate out along with it. See? But if we put it on top, it won't. That's why the ring is on top, because we don't want the ring underneath. We want the ring to look like a complete ring. So it doesn't go skinny all of a sudden. Uh, we want the ring on top. All right. So now we have this little effect here. But you know what? Let's put some text on here. Let's uh, starring there, C4D Guru Harrison. Let's uh, shrink that down a little bit. Kind of fits. Can you tell that I'm kind of full of myself? Can't believe I'm married. There we go. All right, so we're gonna do that. Uh, and we're also gonna put in, uh, let's put a second line of text in there. Let's make it right justified. Put a second line of text in there. Even though he talks too fast. And then we're going to shrink that down a bit. Uh, text, 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 text. There it is, character. Perfect. 
Alright, we're gonna pop it. And then we're gonna pop it up. There we go. C4D Guru Harrison, even though he talks too fast. There we go. Make that 3D layer so it moves with the uh, comp. But as you can see, we don't have our camera data that I just realized. So we need to slide over here, open up our compositing project file, save, include 3D data, save the project file right there. CG Tooth Plus Logo dot AEC. Save. Slide back over. Let's import our camera data. And then we're going to do some really crazy stuff with this in a second. Uh, CG Tooth Plus Logo dot AEC. And it's loaded. Open up the comp. Got everything selected here. Copy into our bumper, paste. And now it's, well, it's all the way down here because the position coordinates are set up like that. We need to move them back to the origin and then move them over and down. And because we lined our text up to the origin, this is a lot easier to line the text up to underneath the CG2 Plus. Let's increase the size of that a little bit. Actually, we don't need any, any of the lights either, so we'll get rid of those. Um, there. But we want the can But as you can see right now, the text isn't animating out. It's staying inside the ring. So we want to move this underneath the mat so that way it animates out along with everything else. Now we're going to make a 3D flare. I need to put a marker inside Cinema 4D in order to know where the flare is going to go. So I bring in a null object. I want to click on right click. External compositing, where is it? There it is. And then I'm going to go render, render settings, save project file, and I'm going to overwrite this. Replace. And then, if you remember, I told you last time, uh, we can't update this. I can't right click on this and click update. I have to make a new one. So I'm going to do this. I'm going to call this C4D Cam Dat 01. Now I'm going to import the new. And I'm going to call this C, oops, C4D Cam Dat 02. Now I have two sets of camera data, both are different. Um, in this one, I don't have my null, and in this one, I do. So I'm going to grab my null, copy, go into my bumper, hit paste. Doesn't matter where I put it, because all I'm going to use is just the uh, location of it. Just, um, just going to use the coordinates of it so I can tuck it all the way underneath the camera if I want. Now we're going to bring in a flare. Uh, we're going to bring in a black solid, and we're going to call this flare. Uh, don't want to use null. I'm going to use, I think, Cinema 4D. Uh, After Effects has a stock flare, I think. Uh, where is it? Simulation? Stylize? Flare. No, they don't call it flare. What do they call it? Shoot. Sorry, I haven't messed with AE flare in forever. Flare. Lens flare. Oh, it's under generate. Okay. That's it? Seriously? Oh, jeez. All right. Uh, get null. Seriously. Null life factory. You, you got to pick it up. <laughs> uh, it's, 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 it's glorious. Uh, it, it's got all these different flares that they use. Everybody in the movies uses it. Uh, every professional uses it. I don't think it's that expensive. And null, if you uh, bother to sit and stare at your Photoshop as it loads up, you'll notice that Thomas Null is one of the people that's responsible for all these things that we do. And he wrote a plugin called Null Light Factory. And he named it after himself because apparently he's more full of himself than I am. All right, now we wanna make this 3D. We wanna have this flare center located on the null object in 3D because if we see the null object moves with the camera and we want it to be attached to that. Um, we can try match movement, we can try doing individual keyframes or we can use an expression. Uh, we're going to take our flare, tuck it underneath the mat because we want the flare to be gone along with the mat. And we're going to change this to an add so it actually affects the scene. Wow, that looks hokey. All right, so we go to flare. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to option click on flare center. And that applies an expression to it. Uh, and then this expression, I don't know what it is on PC. It might be alt click. Um, Expressions are incredibly useful. I'm not going to go into them very much except for this one time. If you want to do a whole lot, check out our sister site. It's uh, AE Tooth Plus. Um, they'll have a ton on there, I'm sure. Uh, so now I'll have a whole lot more on expressions and things like that. But this is one I use all the time. Um, it's going to be source equals this, 
comp dot layer, which means that what we're going to do is we're going to choose the source of what we're doing. What we're going to where we're getting these values is going to be inside this comp in a layer titled. Uh, you know what? Let's change this. Let's call this flare marker. All right. Source equals this comp dot layer, which is all we're saying. It's just like the folders in your computer, C drive, my documents. All it's saying is that in this composition, there's a layer called flare marker. And we're going to semicolon, which means end that line. So in this, so we're going to say is uh, we're going to use as a source in this comp. There's a layer called flare marker, and for that, we're going to use source to comp source dot anchor big P point. And all we're telling After Effects is that inside this composition, there's a um, there's a layer called flare marker, and in this uh, in this layer that we call source, there in relation to the comp, I want the anchor point. I want to know where the anchor point is in relation to the comp, not the scene. The scene, if I move this way, way down, it's all the way down here. These position coordinates are in relation to the scene. What I want is I want to know where they are in relation to this comp window. So as you can see, if I delete this keyframe, uh, as you can see, the flare will follow. The, you know what, let me just get rid of everything but the flare and the marker. As you can see, the flare will follow where the marker is. So if I move this thing all over the place, I can now have a 3D flare. And you can make an expression to where the further it gets away from the camera, the dimmer it gets if you want. But um, as you can see, as it moves in 3D space, I can tie... I can tie this expression to this marker. The thing is though is it'll only work with an anchor point. I can't use the position coordinates because the position coordinates are in relation to excuse me excuse me the position coordinates are in relation to the scene whereas I can use the anchor point coordinates in relation to the comp. So if you want to do something like a light, if I want to attach a flare to a light, the light doesn't have an anchor point. It only has the position coordinates. So what I need to do is I need to basically parent a null object to this and then use the null object's anchor point. Now this will work with any 2D effect. Any effect that's completely two-dimensional that only that you want to tie the center to a 3D object, but it's not 3D. So instead of you know After Effects fixing this and allowing you to do this simply as opposed to memorizing or putting this down in a you know, memorizing this little text stream right here, and they could have it, you know, in here where you say, okay, just attach it to a null object. They give me, you know, uh, oh look, I can have animation presets and things that I'll never use because it's my job to come up with animation. <sighs> Sorry. Anyway, so now we have our flare, our glorious flare, sitting inside our absolutely beautiful award-winning scene here, and we want it to. Yeah, I mean it looks pretty good so far. I mean I got a flare floating in 3D space here. I got you know my text string and everything that's all 3D. It's all being matched to the camera. I got depth of field all done inside After Effects, all done with just a few renders that I've spit out, and then it all animates off very very cleanly, very simply. And if I go to my text render, just clip this to six seconds, I can see it all. Well, I don't want to do full. I want to do half. In fact, another thing we can do is to help it animate on, we can actually change the brightness of this flare. Let's say, let's put it at, uh, at least I think this might work. I don't know. I've never done it with the stock flare before. Yeah, we're going to do a white flash. And we're going to ease in this keyframe. So it'll flash from white down to CG2 Plus and animate straight out. That is so 80s, it's delicious. <laughs> but I mean, that's not too bad. We got a white flash, and then down to the flare, and then it animates out. I mean, look, this isn't going to win a telly, but you know, it, it, it shows a few core concepts that involve advanced compositing. I mean, we got our matte object animating out. We have a 3D flare. We have depth of field in the background, all done procedurally, which means no, con no deconstruction. We can go back and change any one of these things and still get the same scene. 
And in here, you know, it's all done with After Effects. So if I don't even want my depth of field, I can just turn it off. Or I can turn it back on, or I can increase to 25 if I really want it blurred, or I can bring it down to 5. I can do anything I want here. I can invert the depth map, so everything is blurred except for the cylinders. Or I can just leave it alone. I mean, I can do whatever I want with it. And I don't have to worry about re-rendering anything. It's fast, it's simple, and it's easy, and I hope you guys learned something. Um, I don't know what I'm going to do for my next tutorial. Uh, I was thinking about doing materialing. I might do MoGraph. I don't know. If there's any suggestions, suggestions of things that you guys want to see, leave it in the comments. I've been reading them, even though I haven't been replying very much. Um, once again, I'd like to point out... Oh, excuse me. Uh, you know, this, I, I, I do motion graphics. I don't do real 3D. I don't do pixel pushing. So uh, the stuff I do is... I can't really get too advanced because it's so specialized, you know? I mean, a lot of this stuff you guys will probably never use. I would hope that you would use some of these techniques for other things, but uh, the odds of you actually using this exactly like this are pretty slim. But now you can see some advanced compositing and uses of After Effects along with Cinema 4D. And I really hope that, especially this part, really helps you out a lot. Being able to take a 2D effect and apply it to a 3D layer. So that way you have essentially a 3D effect. Um, yeah, if there's any suggestions or anything on what to do in the uh, for my next tutorial, sure, leave it in the comments, and I'll be sure to read it. Uh, thanks for tuning in, and yeah, good luck and happy hunting. Hopefully you guys learn something and move on to the next level, and I'll see you next time. Later.